transfer to the computer. Let's do that now. Okay, so we're live in the group, guys, and we're we're live on this now. So, uh, Jen, you went out for a run this morning. Did you get any of the work done? No. <laughs> okay, so yesterday and last night you asked me. I know. I, spoke, I did much, watch. I watched your video, I, or okay. I watched the webinar. I know I'm not supposed to be here, but I'm a cleaner. Right. So, You're good. Okay. <laughs> You're good. So here's the thing: is is that you asked me last night if you had more than seven days to complete the work. You can, like I said, you can take a year. But I want you to consider that the whole point of getting traction with this is to actually complete all the work in a okay. week. Now I'm giving you two extra days because I mucked up and I couldn't get the thing <laughs> downloaded onto YouTube last night until this morning. All right. So there we go. We have until next Wednesday to get through the work. Now, Dr. Colgan, that's actually joining us right now, if I can speak a little bit on your behalf while you're, sure. you're sitting there, um, you do all this work alongside of us. So a lot of this, other than what's going to happen on Thursday, Thursday will be brand new to you. It's basically a stack, but it adds a little bit more uh, John Demartini. So it just takes the stack to a different level. And then it, the reframe is slightly different in that it brings us back to our values and our mission. So it's a slightly different one, which I'm going to introduce to you guys. Okay. which is uh, something I've been working on for a long period of time. So I'm really excited about um, adding that in. So what I'm going to do, you guys, just for a second, is I'm going to mute you guys out as well as anybody else that chooses to join us during this time. And I'm just going to get into a quick share. Um, I'm going to see if I can actually share. Do, do I have a PowerPoint that I can share right at the moment? I do not, so I'm going to share it this way. I get out of all this business. Bring up PowerPoint. If you guys, if you guys want to get a hold of me, just unmute yourself or put your hand up. And I'm going to go through this, but a quick little review for you, Jen, because this will be brand new to you. And for you, Dr. Colgan, I see other people that are starting to come in and join us at the moment. I want to make sure that we set ourselves up when we start at the climb of the formula. We want to, the code is essentially just telling the fucking truth. It's about getting the details and the facts and dealing with all that kind of stuff. Because so many times during life, we just get busy with all the minutia and we just get busy in doing and then the overwhelm starts to come and we never actually sit down and just look at what the details are. So what I want you to do first before you do really anything is get through the facts about body your fulfillment, relationships, and business. Get it all out there. Do that work as well as what we ended up with last night was talking about looking at what the fruit, the fruit or the, the, what you want one year from now. So, Doc, one of the most important things about, about doing the one-year projection is that this will eventually set you up for reverse engineering, the, the bits and pieces that will make your 90-day challenges, but it will come more crystal clear with the process that I'm going to explain to you. So by day seven, I'll explain that a little bit better to you, okay? So again, just to review, you want to go through this for where you are right now. Then you want to go through where you want to be with your body, your fulfillment, your relationships, and your business a year from now. Your feelings about where you want to be with that, as well as taking the what's working and what's not working. You want to take what's working and leverage it and write out all the things that are working. All the things that aren't working are going to create a list of things you need to learn or a list of things that you need to create and do. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take that list of dominoes and you're going to choose from it. So, Doc, this is where it gets, where it gets really, really important is that you'll take that list and you will see one, one thing in each one of those categories that if you did it, it would have the single biggest impact in each category and that becomes essentially your 90 day challenge okay that was the review from yesterday now going to day two we're going to start to talk about the engine and for <clears throat> there's several people that are in this uh, in the program right now that are part of either men of iron women of iron or participating in coaching programs with me already <clears throat> and we know the engine as what dr colgan what do we call it habits yeah, well, we call it the daily habits. We also call it the core four. Core four. Okay, so I'm going to go through this really quickly, but I want you to consider for the analogy of climbing a mountain, which is just the analogy that I'm using for the freedom formula, is we need 
a foundation to start on, which is the code. Then we need an accelerator, which is the engine, and that's going to be your daily habits. So Jen, you and I have been talking about this a little bit as far as what that looks like. So I will give you some of my examples. And then Dr. Colgan, if you want to chime in here, I think this would be an awesome place because you've been doing this for more than a year to, to be able to give some of the things that have worked and not worked for you. So I'll go through mine in a second, and then I'll, I'll maybe ask you to chime in here a little bit. So <clears throat> ideally, daily habits, Jen, I know you're going to sit there and go, oh, hells no, I ain't getting half of these done with it. <laughs> within a day I might get two of these done and we we all have we all have the same go ahead you might be surprised I'm a pretty busy lady <laughs> okay. and I'm a pretty determined woman I I have a feeling I'm already like yeah I'm working I, I already know I'm really just pulling your leg <laughs> but what happens here you guys is these daily habits need to be construed in such a way that they can be done every day and Jen what I want you to remember is there's going to be days like Christmas and New Year's. You may choose one of those days off. That's fine. But as soon as you go, you know what? I did my exercise and I, I ate the way that I wanted to do today. And I did some meditation and I connected with my, with my daughter and I learned something. But you know what? I'm not going to bother connecting in with my husband. Or I'm not going to bother doing that piece of connection or saying I love you. Basically, what you're doing is you're giving yourself permission to turn off the traction meter, okay? So what the purpose of this is, is it's non-negotiable. And in this group, I don't determine them, you determine them. So in men and women of iron, for example, a full four points on a daily basis is mandatory and it must be posted. That's part of the accountability. We post it on a daily basis, because this is what creates the habit and the traction. Because when we feel like we're just not getting traction in something, whether it's, it's easy for, like you and I have had this conversation, Jen, about like we're, we're training for a marathon. Well, we're not just gonna go run 22 kilometers twice a week. We're gonna train probably four or five days a week, but we're gonna do short ones, we're gonna do fast ones, we're gonna do different versions of it, but we're gonna do something every day. So let me go through my version of the core four, or what I call the engine. What I do for the body on a daily basis is I do some type of activity. And mine right now, just to give, for those of you that are brand new to this, it doesn't necessarily mean that you are doing an hour workout or a two hour workout. For me, yesterday, I went to the gym in the morning before work and I also did kickboxing at night. It was a pretty extensive body day. And I'm currently on a paleo diet. So, well, I have my salad right here waiting for me. So something green is mandatory on a daily basis. And that's not very difficult. <clears throat> Even in your when you're in a restaurant, you can ask for some asparagus or some broccoli. It's just a matter of making it important to get that in. Okay? Um, Tuesdays, today, for example, I just do a push-up series. So I do 50 push-ups followed by a plank. And that is all the activity that I do today because I'm at work from 6 a.m. till 7, and then I coach again tonight. So I don't get home until about maybe 9 o'clock on, on Tuesday nights, and I haven't done very much else, okay? So Wednesdays <clears throat> is a workout in the morning, and then my wife and I hike. We hike Mount Doug, for those of you that are local here in Victoria, British Columbia. Thursday is another push-up day. But now, starting in three weeks, I start my swim training. So at lunchtime, I've got a two and a half hour uh, gap, and I go and swim train. I do sprints in the pool at lunchtime. Then I follow it with what we call the DFC. And anybody that follows me in Men of Iron knows what the DFC is. It's called Dad's Fight Club. We've got a bunch of guys that get together, and we spar, and it's fantastic. But by Thursday night, I'm pretty trashed. Friday is another push-up day. The weekend, I do another gym workout followed by hill sprints. And then there's one other rest, relax, or treatment day that I have on the weekends. Okay? That's my schedule, and it doesn't change very much. So even when I'm traveling, what I want you guys to remember is you're going to have things that come up, and then you're going to go, well, I didn't get to it today because I did X. 
I want you to remember if your business is something you want to grow, you cannot have excuses. You have to have audibles. Jen, it's like you're traveling and you're like, well, I'm on the plane. I couldn't eat all the vegetables I want. Well, grab a green juice from Starbucks for crying out loud. These little audibles are things that we need to, to think about ahead of time because it's the intention and the consistency that's going to get us where we want to go. Okay. Fulfillment or being is the second category. When it comes to being, there's different things that we can do. For those of you that, that have a, a practice of prayer, you can pray. My practice is somewhere between a three to 15 minute meditation. That's half my point, and the other half a point is journaling. Now, when you get into either the stack, what I call the Patriot Missile Game, John Demartini calls it the uh, Demartini process or the quantum collapse process. Uh, Byron Katie calls it the work. When you get into some of the stuff, and I'm going to introduce this to you on Thursday, that becomes part of your fulfillment and being point on a daily basis. But again, uh, one of the reasons why I'm putting it into an app, and Chris, you and I have been doing this for a while, is I need something that's simple and easy to do, and I need to be able to do it on my phone on the go. It's kind of the way that it works best for me. I like to do this type of work first thing in the morning so that, again, I'm done. When we do this in Warrior, the engine or the core four, the motto is this. The motto is do the core four before you hit the door so that you can go to war. When you get these four points done before you leave in the morning or as early as you can in the morning, your day is on fire, in power, and you're ready to rock and roll. But it just doesn't work that way, so it really takes strategizing, which I'm going to get to, I believe, on day six when we talk about the drift. We're going to talk a little bit about accountability and organizing yourself into what's called the general's tent or into a weekly strategy session so that you look a week ahead. I literally spend an hour every week, and I write out when I'm doing all of these things and how I'm doing them. Last thing I want to do is show up on Tuesday and go, damn, when am I going to get a podcast in? Or when am I supposed to work out today? I don't think I can fit it in today. I don't think that's going to happen. Or the last thing you want to do is you want to get to date night on Friday. Chris, you and I have talked a lot about this. Get to date night on Friday and go, shit, I don't even know part of my language. I don't even know what, what, <clears throat> what, what restaurant we're going to. Hun, which restaurant do you want to go to? I don't really know. You want, where do you want to go? Well, I don't really know. And then you get to the restaurant, if you're lucky enough to even have the time or the babysitter hired, you get there, you look at each other's phones for a little while, maybe communicate three or four words, maybe have a pint so you can sedate the brain a little bit. In my case, I just want to get home, get over to my friend's place so that I can get even more plastered. And that's date night. That used to be my pattern. Okay. So the reality of it is, is that if it's the work that you do ahead of time in organizing this for your week sets you up for success. I don't think I need to really explain why planning works. Okay. So again, body is some form of activity and something related to the diet plan that you're currently on. So again, Dr. Colgan, if I can speak for you on your behalf again, you're one of the leaders in a program called Chirothan and when it's a different diet. So it doesn't necessarily mean that there's something green on a daily basis because if the diet doesn't call for it, then that's not what you do. If you have a specific diet that's prescribed by your doctor, your naturopath, your chiro, your whatever it is, the dietitian that you're working with, then do that and strategize it according to the diet. For simplicity's sake, I just say something green. Fulfillment, meditation, and journal. And when I post, oftentimes you'll see me post into social media, whether it be LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, something I'm doing. I'm basically just journaling what I'm learning about myself and I'm just putting it out there. And sometimes people will write back and go, hey, listen, I really needed to hear that today. I don't really do it for anyone else's benefit most of the time other than I'm just pushing it out. Okay. Um, when it comes to the point for relationships on a daily basis. Jen, you're doing that right now. You're connecting with a little sweet pea that's sitting there. Okay. So connection on a daily basis can be spending time. It can be an act of service. 
It can be words of affirmation. It can be a gift. It can just be um, some amount of uh, time that you spend, whether it's a video message, a text message. It can literally be any one of those things. For anybody that has not yet read and consumed the five love languages, I highly recommend that you do. You go to the website, the five love languages .com, I believe. There's a quick little questionnaire that you can do. One of the things that I do almost every morning before I leave the house is Tracy is quality time and acts of service. I mean, there's, there's bits and pieces of words of affirmation and other things that come into that, but I try to make sure that I do the dishes, clean up the, the kitchen a little bit before I leave the house. That's my, hey, listen, I love you. I'm just I'm doing a couple things so that when you get up, it's a little less hectic for you in the morning. For the kids, oftentimes I will text message Ava. Yes, my daughter's 10 and she has a phone for crying out loud. So she's, she's, she has access to technology. So I will sit there and I'll just text her a little thing. And again, it's my way of connecting. And sometimes I'll leave a sticky note on the on a mirror or on the kitchen, uh, on the uh, refrigerator or something like that. And my connection with my kids isn't necessarily the same as what, what I would write or say to my wife. Oftentimes for my kids, it's something silly, right? But the reality of it is, it's about connecting on a daily basis. Because you guys all know what it's like. If you're running a business in a business, or like you are right now, you got a business called Kids right now, Jen. Life gets chaotic, and it just becomes, you, you'll get so focused on the things that are the tasks that are in front of you, that that connection with your partner, the connection with your other children, or whatever, go down because it doesn't become part of your awareness. These habits help to build the connection. Build and grow. So when it comes to relationships and connection, you get half a point for your partner if you have one and half a point for children or anybody else that you're trying to increase your connection with. So let's say it's a parent, it could be a friend, it could be anybody, it's just pushing out something. In my case, sometimes what I'll do, for any of the doctors that are in the group that, that run practices, what I'll do is I'll think about somebody that's in my practice that just needs a, hey, how are you? And I'll push out an email, a text message, or something like that, um, particularly if I noticed that they were struggling the week before. <clears throat> okay? That also is part of my habit chain. Okay? When it comes to the fourth point, business and money. Okay? So if you're trying to grow a business, trying to start a business, trying to start a new career, or you're in the middle of a career, you run a business, or you're part of a business, it doesn't matter where you're at with this. Where you focus your time and energy is going to really come down to day one in the code and where it is that you want to go with these things. But what I want you to consider for the daily habits, simplify it. Grab a book, a podcast, someone you want to listen to, some course that you're studying, even a program like this. If you do this today and just listen to this module, I want you to consider that it is an act of intention in order to grow who you are, whether it's business, body, being, or balance, okay? You get your point, Chris, <laughs> okay? So doing something intentionally on a daily basis in order to learn and then teach it, those are the two points that you get. So Jen, one of the things you'll notice that I do a lot is almost on a daily basis, you'll notice some kind of post it's generally something that I'm learning or something that I'm passing on or something that I'm, I'm, it's very aligned though with my values and with my mission. I try to get off of all the BS that's, I used to post everything that's funny and, and you know, cartoons of X, Y, and Z. And I've really honed in, my posts are now focused on my values and my mission. Almost 99% of, every once in a while, I see something that's funny and I got to share it. That's just the way that it is. That's social media. <laughs> it can't be a stick in the mud <laughs> all the time. Okay, so uh, Skinny, I see that you're hiding in there as well. And when it comes to any of the business that you're growing, brother, or if you're working on growing any of, any of your work, it's the same thing. It's like, what skill can I practice? What skill can I learn? What skill can I do? And then teach it out to someone or go and do it. So Chris, for example, I think, uh, you know, within our world, 
It could simply be learn something more about how you can help somebody within the Chirothin program and then go and teach it to one of your people. Boom, done, point done. Okay? Simplify your habits on a daily basis. But what I want you to consider, if once a week you sat down with your journal, with your journal, and you wrote out when you're going to do these things, <clears throat> this is how you get habit traction. And one of the reasons why we do this across all four areas every single day is when one area gets weak, it lights a fire. Then we have to go put that fire out, and then the other areas suffer, and it just becomes a relentless firefighting shit show. We know what that's like, don't we, Doc? Oh, yeah. Now, now that I've said all that, I know that this has been a great review, hopefully, for you, Doc, and for, for everyone else, the core four, the engine, whatever it is that you want to call this, daily morning habits. The earlier you can get this done in your day, the better. Okay? You can chase to the end of the day and get your meditation done two minutes before you go to bed while you're brushing your teeth. You can kind of snore while you're brushing your teeth if you want to. But I want you to consider that adds stress to your day. I'm not asking you to consider doing the engine to add stress. I'm doing it so that you get traction in your life. Because ultimately, most, pe most of you that are coming into this group have asked me, how can I get from point A to point B? I'm not getting any traction. Doing the same thing over and over is the definition of insanity, but I can't figure out how to get more into my life. It's about simplifying and increasing the consistency. But I want you to remember, as soon as you weaken one area, every other area of your foundation will implode. Okay, we know what happens when our relationships implode. We know what happens when our body implodes. We know what happens when we do everything for everyone else and we martyr ourselves because we're a good mom or we're a good dad and then we resent the hell out of everyone else around us. And how dare you ask one more thing out of me, right? I know what that's like. Okay, so Dr. Colgan, in between bites there, I would love it, my friend, if you... Uh, we're willing to share just a couple things about what you have, what's worked really well for you over the last couple of years and a couple of things that any other points that you would appreciate bringing up. Oh, well, just a couple, huh? All right. Um, <laughs> Whatever you'd like to share, man. Well, um, you know, yeah, just, as, you know, especially with, um, you know, fulfillment, you know, whether it be, you know, body uh, or, you know, prayer, med meditation or journaling, you know, so there's a, you could, you could do this in many different ways, you know, I, so for me, I could use the, the, the uh, program called Muse, you know, you put it on your phone, you have the headband, it puts you in a kind of state of meditation, but you gamify it. So I'm trying to get all these, I'm trying to get as many birdies as I can to, to show that I'm in the moment and my mind's not wandering. Okay, so it helps you get to a point of present time consciousness. And that's, that's been really fun for me to do. Um, if uh, I want to look into scripture, I have something that every single day, you know, it's dated. It's just something that kind of gives something out of, out of the Bible to kind of help you reflect on the day on whatever you do. So that helps me connect there, especially when it comes to, um, you know, business. Uh, I'm always learning. I think a lot of people who follow me or who have seen me online, I'm, all, I'm at a seminar, I'm learning or I'm watching a, a webinar, I'm trying to learn new tech. Uh, I play a role with other other chiropractors and influence them and helping them, uh, you know, with their businesses. So I'm always trying to see what what else is out there that can make our lives easier and simpler, for that matter. Uh, body, sometimes it's like you're saying, you know, I got if I don't have time to do a, a workout or if I'm not working, at least I could do something that is like a jailbreak workout to get my heart rate up. You know, that's it. What is a jailbreak workout? What what is that for you? Well, for me, that's kind of like, okay, I got, you know, five or 10 minutes to do, you know, push-ups, sit-ups, some uh, squats, you know, just something to get the body moving, uh, you know, uh, planks, you know, where you don't have to go anywhere. I could just go right in the living room or any room and do that. So. An airport, a 
yeah. like individual yeah. stall in a bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> whatever, whatever it takes, whatever you got to do to get, you know, to get I, that point. I, I really appreciate you bringing up meditation. I can't tell you it's probably the same thing. You probably experienced this too when you started into the Men of Iron group. I can't tell you how many people resist meditation. I was one of the biggest resistors until I started to practice the art of meditation. But here's one of the simple things. If you're one of those people that's joining the group and you're trying to figure out, well, uh, I'll do everything Dr. Doyle says with the exception of meditation. I'm telling you right now, there's gonna be about 50% are gonna think that thing. But right. what I want you to consider is that whether you use Muse or you have different skills or tool sets in order to do meditation, it can literally be as easy as just closing your eyes and setting your timer for three minutes. Right. Doing deep breathing, and if you do deep breathing, in through the nose, out through the mouth, and if you just did that for three minutes, what's interesting is to follow the train of thought and the things that come in and out of your brain. Right. And once you focus on just the breathing, there's just, you start to hit the gaps between your thoughts. It's absolutely f phenomenal. And for those of us that are stressed, tapped, burnt out, over, overwhelmed, etc., even just three minutes of shutting the brain off is one of the most important things to do. So yeah, thank you for bringing that up. I appreciate it. You're welcome. And also too, you know, like, like you were saying there, you know, we, I, you know, I'm here in the San Francisco Bay area and it is just nonstop everything right now. It is just crazy here. Um, and, uh, you know, when you see these patients coming in, you know they're not giving themselves three minutes of anything. You know? <laughs> they're, on the, they're just on the go, go, go. So, I mean, it, you know, and also, too, on top of what you're saying, it just helps you get that, that centeredness, that, you know, that present time consciousness, just to like, okay, I just need to give myself a break to tell everyone to, you know, F you, right? So, um, oh. that's, that's your time. Man. When, I, when I did Warrior Week with Garrett J. White, it was February 2018, I think. It, no, it would have been 2017, I think. My goodness, my time is, is fading on me. Right now. <laughs> um, literally, we were so uncomfortable for the first day and a half. We were like eating out of garbage bins and, and in and out of water and carrying logs. And they, they, I mean, you remember bits and pieces from doing Men of Iron. We were so uncomfortable for a day and a half that we would get into a bus, we'd be blindfolded and head shrouded. And it was those times where people, people would say to me, well, how is it being like a prisoner of war and treated like that? And I was like, those were the times that were the biggest periods of peace and relaxation that we experienced the entire time because the mind just settled. Yeah. You weren't in the constant fight or flight. I didn't realize what they were doing, but they were actually giving us periods of time to relax. Yeah. <laughs> unbelievable. Okay. What other things have you noticed about the core four for you that have worked as far as things like, and I want you to think about time of day, organizationally, what, what, what other observations have you noticed? Doc? Well, time, time has always been a conversation, you know, I mean, it's, there's 24 hours in a day. You gotta, you'll find it. It, it. If it's a priority, right? I mean, if you prioritize it, it's going to happen. But if it's like, oh shoot, I didn't have that on the schedule, or I didn't, oh, I gotta, I gotta fit that in. You know, it makes life more difficult for you. So, and sometimes you're throwing a curveball and you gotta course correct. But you know, it, it, you're empowered to know that the excuse of time is no longer an excuse. I mean, yeah. You're, if you, if you find that you're in a position where you say, I just don't have the time for it, you're not in a position of power anymore. You want to, if you're not, if it's never that you don't have time for it. It's not, it's not, you're not willing to make. You're not choosing to do it. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And that's, that's the point of the freedom formula that we're creating in here is freedom comes from action, not from running away from things. And, and my wife has a, my wife has a great way of telling me, he goes, Chris, it's not that you didn't have time for it. You didn't make it a priority. And I hate it when she, I get so triggered when she says that because. Because you know, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> we always know that it's true. Right. Okay, any other any other tips or tidbits that you've uh, that, that really hit home for you that you could share? Um, definitely on the date night, keeping that plan. You know, just like you're saying, it's like if we ever get in that position where, hey, what restaurant do you want to go to? I I know that's already a fail. Yeah, you, know? you failed at that point. Yeah, it's 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 like okay, boy, this all right, you know. So 
Yeah, I try yeah, on, to you know, do my best not five, to be there. On day five of this, we're going to go through what I call the base camp, which is setting up your dates, your weekly dates for self, partner, mm -hmm. and for kids. And I'll go through in more detail some of the suggestions that I have, particularly around dates. Um, Chris, thank you. I'm just going to mute you again for a second here, bud. Okay. Um, and what I'm going to do is I've got a couple quick things I want everybody that is participating in the, the process to do. So here comes some of your homework. Okay. The homework for at least the remainder of this challenge. If you decide to opt out of the challenge or if you decide that you don't want to continue to get traction and pull things forwards in your life after the challenge, okay, that's fine. But for the remainder of the challenge, each and every one of you is going to get four points per day as part of your engine. And this is how I want you to consider doing it. You get one point for your body, half a point for some form of activity, half a point for something green. That's it. <clears throat> if you have questions about that, ask me in the group. For being in fulfillment, you get half a point for meditation or prayer, and you get half a point for journaling something. If you want to share some of your revelations or an epiphany that's occurred in your meditation into social media, that counts. Relationships and connection. If you have children, you're going to do something with your children, whether it's a sticky note. Sometimes I leave, leave in the morning before my kids are awake and I'm home after they're asleep. So I leave them sticky notes, text messages, voice messages, whatever that is. Same thing if you have a partner, you're going to do the same thing. <clears throat> Some form of connection. And I want you to consider if you want to take this to the next level, this is a higher level part of the coaching, is do the, the five love languages and figure out what your partner appreciates in how you communicate love. It's not going to necessarily be through the same lens that you want. So for me, touching, physical touch, words of affirmation happen to be really important to me. But they're very unique to how I, I like to hear those things. And so my wife is having to learn how to communicate that way. My way, vice versa. I can't communicate touch on my wife as those of you that are ladies in this know that if if I'm communicating touch to somebody that doesn't like to be touched, we know that, that becomes a deterrent. <laughs> okay. When it comes to business or to relation to relationships and connection, both kids and partner, if you have them. Um, if you don't have those things, this is a great way of setting up the foundation for connection with people that are important to you. Business, you get a point for learning something and for teaching something. That's it. For the remainder of this challenge, that's until Wednesday of next week, you will be working towards getting four points per day. And if before you go to bed every night, you can strategize where, when, and how you're going to get those points made, I will tell you, you will have more traction in your life by the end of this week than you have in the last three months just by starting your engine. Okay, that is your assignment for today. Um, other notes that I want to make here tomorrow is going to be a super early webinar. For those of you that are going to be able to participate, it's at 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Jen, I hope that you're going to be bright and bushy-tailed for that. <laughs> uh, Chris, I know that 6 a.m. is your favorite time as well. So it's going to be at 6 a.m., but it will be replayed and put back into the group, so don't worry. It is a huge part of this challenge. The part we're gonna work on tomorrow is called the fuel. So if you can see my screen, the fuel is diving into your purpose. It's diving deeply into your values and your personal, personal mission statement. This takes some time and energy, but it's important that you do this if you're gonna use the Sherpa, the tool that's gonna to come out in the app eventually. If you are unclear as to what your purpose, what your mission, and what your key three to five values are, it becomes very difficult to fit, pick a direction that you're going to go in life because ultimately we are all driven by acquiring dopamine, serotonin, oxytocin, endorphin, and we will go and immediately gratify those things any way that we can or we will sedate in any way that will provide those things for us because we're just running on a treadmill that's burning ourselves out. So I want you to consider that the fuel in day three tomorrow is going to be a huge piece 
of your freedom formula. Okay, uh, it's 6 a.m. Pacific time. Tomorrow, that's Wednesday. Um, today's homework, today's assignment is to work on your four points for at least the remain each day for the remainder of this challenge. And your homework is to post into the group. If you haven't done yesterday's homework, I want to know what your biggest takeaway from yesterday's module was. That needs to be posted into the group. Today's second piece of the homework is to post what you're going to do as far as your core four, and what the core four is and what it looks like for you. Okay? Jen, question? Yeah. Um, okay. Am I off mute? You're, you're, you're live. You bet. I'm live. Okay. Um, so to post my biggest takeaway from yesterday's, I mean, there, there's quite a bit of homework for yesterday, which is great, and I love it. Um, I think it's great. It's, it's excellent, like, focus and a way to kind of organize – you know what's happening in your life my life you know it's uh but is it do you want to know about the takeaways and like what did i learn about myself or like from the homework was there, or from was there anything from the information that lit a light for you well, yeah of course and what was that what was the well, biggest one for you the, the takeaway i think is just uh, just when i was listening to the replay while i was doing my run this morning um noticing how much I'm already accomplishing was awesome. So that was a really, good. it was like, yeah, like I've been, I mean, I've been digging into this stuff for a few years now. Right. And it was really nice to reflect on how much I'm actually accomplishing. And that is kind of some fine tuning, right? Like it's the fine tuning of kind of some of the nuances, you know, and, a, and like a big category for me now that I'm kind of moving out of being full-time mom to two kids is professional. And, um, yeah. Yeah, and it felt a lot more obtainable, you know, just contemplating what I would write down in those, in that category and how I would frame that. Awesome. Um, all of a sudden, things just didn't feel as overwhelming, right? Like, it's like, oh, things are good. It's way less overwhelming when you can organize it, like, what's going well? What do I need to work on? What are my facts of my life? You know, and as I pondered that, it, it, it felt good. And You're doing more than you think, aren't that's you? Right. That's it's right. just a matter of putting it onto the shelves so that you can totally. appreciate it. We do something in Men of Iron called a brag journal. It's the same thing. Nice. You look at what you've done throughout the day. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you how many times you've ended the day and you felt like crap because you don't feel like you've done enough. But if you actually write out all the different pieces of what it is you've accomplished with intention, mm -hmm. it creates a journal that you can look back and go, okay, I'm doing more than what I think. It didn't feel like Everest. It felt like Mount Finlayson. Yeah, you know? I was like, okay, like I can, I can do this. That's I it. This. That what you just said. Yeah. That's it. Doing the work, we call it the hard easy. Ultimately, it does take a little bit of work to do this work. But when you do, you become free to just do the work that's aligned with you. Everything gets simpler. Uh, you hit the nail on the head there, Jen. Thank you for that. Um, any other takeaways? No, I just need to do the homework now. <laughs> now. Now you need to just go do your work. <laughs> so it's between wine or journaling tonight, or maybe both. I don't know. Well, and <laughs> I will allow you to make that decision. And, and if life is going in the way of wine, well, yeah, you know, maybe know. we'll do this another time. <laughs> oh no. Okay, okay. Uh, Chris. Any other any other thoughts? <laughs> Oh, oh, you know when you want us to put like for the takeaways, do you want that? Just just post it. Doesn't just have to post it into the group. Just okay, because, I, particularly with your experience with the content of the information in here, mm -hmm. everybody's going to learn from you. Okay. Okay. And Jen, same thing with you. If you can just post it in the group and go listen, what I learned from webinar one was like when I do this work, it actually helps my brain to make things simpler, so it doesn't feel like Everest. It feels like Finlayson. Yeah. Um, that might work for people in Victoria, but for people that are in California, like Dr. Chris, <laughs> like a make, big make it relevant to what we all know. <laughs> okay, but yes, just a quick little post. And then the same thing that the assignment today is to figure out what you're going to do as far as your four morning ritual habits. Okay, I write that into the group. Let us all know what you're going to do. Because again, I can tell you what I do but it's not important what I do. What's important is what you do, what you do for you. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Skinny, I don't know if you're available to chime in there. Did you have any questions, boss? 
and I can't hear you. I don't know if you're off or, or whatnot, but make sure, make sure any of you guys that are listening kind of in the background, if you have any questions, just make sure you post them into the group. Okay. Anything else from you two? Good. Thank you. You guys are good. Awesome. See you, Jennifer. Nice to meet you. We'll see I'm you tomorrow start. morning. <laughs> we'll morning. Aloha. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my, my kid, we're up at 5.30 every day. It's no problem. 6 a.m., I'm already caffeinated. If we can get hour. Dr. Colgan on this, I will raise a fist. Get, guys, goodbye. Have a wonderful week. I'll see yeah. you tomorrow.